Hi everybody and welcome to this meetup where uh, I, Gustav Eggers and uh, Michael Nilsson will share our experiences from working with API management at Telia Company. So, who am I? Um, I said it before, <laughs> my name is Gustav Eggers. I'm a consultant and developer here at Forefront where I've been working for nine months. I'm part of the technology division here and for the last eight months I've been at Telia Company and API Garden. Uh, here I work with integrations and exposing of APIs and other services through our API platform. But to start soft, um, in order to illustrate how we work with APIs on Telia, um, I would like to illustrate an example here, which I call Project Birthday Cake. Let's put it like this. I have a friend's birthday uh, that is coming up and I want to surprise this friend with a cake that I made by myself. To achieve that, I need an idea of what cake I would like to bake, obviously. And when that is done, I need some ingredients as well, like oat, sugar, chocolate, for example. Not to mention the cookware I need, like mixers, beater, bowls. Maybe access to some books with some recipes to get some inspiration for my cake. And if I know the exact place to get all this, that would be terrific. In this case, I know of a pantry that contains everything I need. Unluckily for me, there's a locker on it, so I need to unlock the pantry. So I need to get the key, and by asking the owner, I'm given the key to the locker. Uh, and because of that, I can unlock the pantry and take advantage of all services behind. In a very flexible and secure way as well. So now I have everything I need to achieve my goal, which is to bake a delicious cake for my friend's birthday. So this is flexible and secure, right? Uh, initially, I have a very clear feeling that most of you are familiar with APIs, and you have probably used one too. An API, an application programming interface, is a set of routines, protocols and tools for building software and applications. An API specifies how software and application components should talk to each other, on what basis they are allowed to interact with each other. APIs became really useful for software and application development when so-called RESTful APIs appeared. A RESTful APIs, also referred to as RESTful Web Services and REST APIs, is based on representational state transfer, which is an architectural style and approach to communications often used in web services development. REST is a way for two computer systems to communicate over HTTP, Hypertransfer Protocol in a similar way to web browsers and servers. It uses HTTP requests to get, post, post and delete data. And based on uh, REST APIs, developers have a standardized and easy way to carry out data and services at a fast and secure way. Because of these protocols between APIs, we know on what basis programs and services can talk to each other. So because of those protocols, we now know that certain things will work because we have an agreement on that in advance. So that standardization will spare us as developers a lot of trouble. You could actually put it like this. APIs are like what's in between a car's ignition and engine. I don't know how it works, but I know that if I turn the key in the ignition, the engine will turn on. Um, like these models here, you can see at the image, um, with the perfect match, it can form this house. But in front of all, if you have the models that you need, it will for sure be the perfect match, given the fact that we have a standardization. Um, one model itself can be pretty useless, uh, perhaps even uh, directly stupid. Uh, but together, uh, if you put them into one, um, they can accomplish great, some great things. For example, uh, weather applications for different cities. In this sense, with proper API infrastructure um, and the proper use of APIs in your organization, it will be an enabler of fast, scalable and secure microservices. This will for sure increase your time to market for software applications, both in long and short term. So if you have a comprehensive solution for this, where you can utilize and implement the usage of APIs in a fast and secure way in your organization, it will unlock the API economy. Having that said, I now leave the word to Michael Nilsson, who is with us from OE. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Nilsson and I'm the product owner for API Publishing, which is more or less Telia's API initiative. Uh, so we're trying to 
gather as much as API work as possible into my team. Uh, and I also come from an agile background, so I think this has very much to do with being agile and how to help the organization to become more agile. Uh, but that's a story for another day. So if we start looking into our team and the vision for the team is that we believe the future belongs to small independent teams. So independent teams need a really easy and automated way to create and consume services. Uh, we provide a platform for building, managing and sharing APIs and uh, you're welcome to try it out. So this is the device we try to live after and yeah, it's been working really good so far. If we look at APIs and the API economy, what is that? I mean, if you look at any YouTube channel or, you know, speech or anything, there's billions of value to be made here with the APIs, right? But how should you take part? Uh, and the problem is not really just, you know, how to take part, but how to make a good business case. And it's pretty soon gets tricky. Uh, in some cases you have an easy API where you can expose something, get paid for it. Uh, the obvious one for us is messaging. It's rather straightforward to have a machine send a message and someone pays a fixed fee for every message that they send. Uh, and that's really easy to do uh, and also easy to explain the business case. But in many cases the uh, complexity grows pretty fast. If you look at the what I call smoothness, which is for me the, the thing that drives API use. Uh, so if you think about any app reorder, taxi or whatever, uh, you often have several parts there. You have a map integration, you have some payment integration, all, all of these things and you just press a button on your app and stuff happens. And that's really the smoothness. But that's also the problem with the API economy. It's rather complex. Uh, any one of these services on their own is not really that powerful. But once you combine them, they get really powerful. And once you start combining stuff, then you also have the problem of explaining the business case. Because it's not really straightforward. You're depending on other parts, you depend on other vendors, maybe you depend on something else and how much is your part worth and how much should go to other vendors with revenue share and stuff like that. But that's what creates the value. Uh, and the smoother it is, the more value you provide to your customer. But even there in the smoothness, there is also some things to think about, I think. And then it's like, so you have an API, you, you can see what your users have been doing. So imagine you're at your computer, you're Googling for a trip to London, you look up that, and then uh, you know a couple of hours later, you're on your phone and you're on Facebook, and suddenly there starts to be all these ads for traveling to London, book your hotel in London, all of that. And then it's like, where is the line? When is it smoothness and when is it too much? When does the user start to feel like you're maybe overstepping this boundary, like the integration, uh, integrity part here for, for the user? And, and that's a, a, sometimes a tough line to, to follow because one user might think it's okay, but another do not think that's okay. So yeah, wh wh where is the smoothness boundary? It, it's something worth thinking of when, you, when you're entering into this complex world. Uh, so if we look at the typical uh, Telia case, uh, what we see from our customers is that mainly B2B, big B2B customers, you have like a new employee coming and normally what happens is that yeah, you go to some administrator, you go there and you say hey I'm new, uh, what, I need a phone. They help you ordering a phone, they log into some page and order the phone for you and uh, a couple of days later it's arriving. What they really would like to have is uh, API where this just happens. So when you're added to the AD, 
you get like, okay, this guy is hired, he's a support engineer, that means he's allowed to select from one of these phones, and he should have a subscription with these services, all of that. He should have it as a device, as a service, so you get the new device every, you know, one or second year, or whatever it is, and if it breaks, you can automatically replace it. And all of that can be done then from their own internet without, you know, going to someone talking and, you know, always having this discussion. But I would like to upgrade to that the nicer phone or newer phone. And then it's like all sorted out and having a phone and all subscriptions, everything just happens. You don't need to think about that anymore. And it's always, you know, getting the right and you're getting the automatically the new versions of the, the phones when they come out and, and everything. No, no more manual work there. It's super easy. And that's kind of a smoothness uh, for our customers. Phones, subscriptions, taken care of. They don't need to do anything with that. So that's a typical Telia case. And what we have seen working with APIs now and trying to focus on that... Last year we've gone from around three externals and then we mean used by customers so they're not all public uh, and then a year later we're up to 16 uh, APIs which we have partners and, and your know, public users on. So once you focus on it start things starts to happen uh, and we also see some businesses and we're talking in businesses like billions of revenue every year where they all transfer into an API economy the the customers they don't want to use you know sending emails and ordering things anymore they want it as an API that's like where it's going so either you're going to be part of that API wave and probably gain even more uh, traffic uh, or business because you're there or eventually you're going to lose out all of your business more or less so how are we thinking around this? Well, our thought is like, our solution should be the place to be. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we offer a service, but you select what's best for you. So if you like our service, free feel, uh, feel free to use the parts that you like to use, or use half of it, or whatever, it, what's your need? You, you decide. Uh, and I mean, with this world, it's rather complex. So we know from the start, or we assume at least, that there will be several platforms with almost the same functionality as ours. And depending on what your business looks like, well, use the one that's best for you. So we have planned for a situation where we're going to end up with several options, but we just want to promote this is the one we are supporting, feel free to use it. And what we then see that we often go out and present and say like, yes, this is our platform, this is what you can do with it, this is how it works. And then some teams are like, okay, but that's not really, we need this functionality or something that's in another platform. And then we say, okay, cool, set that up. Uh, but we really listen to that and try to find our weakness. Why didn't they select us? What the thing that's really missing so when the next team comes we hopefully can offer that uh, and, and that's how we see that we're growing uh, as a platform and a team uh, the part that we haven't seen anyone looking into really is this marketplace or the developer portal uh, so there we have put a lot of focus and that's also built with the intention that there will be several platforms so we can gather APIs from several platforms into our uh, offering and you say okay here's the marketplace add all your APIs and that falls pretty good with the API economy that the more APIs you have the better it is and we have not really seen anyone picking that up so they often have a technology choice like we need this because of something in the technology stack but when it comes to the marketing and publishing the APIs they have nothing preferred and we really there solve an issue for them and since we have been building on this it contains much more functionality than they would get out of the box with any other solution and we're also thinking of us like an internal sauce offering so 
we compete with other SaaS offerings. We do not compete by saying that we are IT. This is, you know, uh, something that's decided that you should use and that's why you should use us. Uh, you should use us because you like our offering and it should be competitive in the market. And if we look at that on the next slide here, uh, is really interesting to see that you're actually getting more from our service than just the Apigee straight out of the, the box. So these are functions we have built on top of Apigee to support uh, Telia users. Uh, and why is it so important to build more than the, you know, what Apigee can offer? Mainly two big things I would say. One is uh, rules. So in, in a big company like Telia, there is a lot of rules on what you can do, what you're not allowed to do. Uh, logging, for example, you need to log certain things in a certain way to a certain system. Uh, security, you need to follow some security guidelines and all of that. And it's perfectly fine if you want to set that up on your own. But here we are, we are offering that, we have automated that. So if you use our service, your logging uh, is automatically pushed to the right place. You don't need to think about that. Security, we're screening the stuff uh, that you're providing so you're not breaking any of the basic uh, security rules that's in place. And also we have regulations. Uh, GDPR is probably the best example where there is a huge fine if you break, break that one. And being uh, in Telia, big turnover as a company, fines will get pretty big. So, well, you don't want to be the one that goes and tell that we broke that, sorry, that was a mistake. So we have automated that as well and made it possible for teams, you know, just use our solution and we were securing that we're not storing stuff which we're not allowed to do. Uh, and, and we have also looked at firewall solutions, how to get to firewalls, that's always a problem. So we've made a standardized solution there. Uh, we're uh, on the roadmap of looking into hybrid solution, where you can also have a, an on-premise solution, which works really neat together with this uh, sauce offering as well. Because uh, some use cases, we mainly see two, where you have a latency issue, or where you have regulations which dictate that you're not allowed to send data out in, in the cloud. Uh, and, and then as you see, we have a lot of other uh, smaller things which we can offer. So uh, I think that think of it as a SaaS solution and, and try to build what's valuable to your customers and how can you help them. And yeah, it has turned out really successful for us. So uh, back to Gustav. Thank you, Michael. Um, so this image you see now, it visualizes what the API economy looks like at Telia and API Garden. This is what we are providing to the world. And here you can find all APIs, public as internal, for external as internal stakeholders. This is why it must be easy and standardized. All APIs at one place for the whole organization to take part of. So the structure here is really important and it will have a negative impact to have APIs and services spread out. So we will now go a bit more hands-on our API management setup at Telia and API Garden. As Michael described, our strive and mission uh, for API Garden is to assist teams and partners in utilizing APIs. And to implement a cross-functional API strategy, there must be a so-called API manager tool also referred to as an API gateway for the backend systems. In our case, here at API Garden, that tool is provided by Apigee, and it is called Apigee Edge. In our case, held and hosted in the AWS cloud. Edge is a platform for developing and managing APIs by exposing services with a proxy layer, as described here on the image to the right. It provides an abstraction, an interface, between the developer and the backend services. Rather than letting developers and API consumers reach those services directly, with a lot of security risks at stake, they can access an Edge API proxy that you create. An API product is when APIs are combining their resources to give a certain amount of access for client app data. But the data itself is carried out and exposed by an app. 
The app is user specific. Credentials are being made for that specific user by a so-called secret and a key, which also helps the providers to keep track of, who, of who's using the services. To use a specific app, you need a secret and a key to be approved as a receiver of a so-called access token which allows you to call and receive data from an actual API. Um, API Edge could best be described as a shield with openings into all the information you need and to the digital services behind. Before this API manager mindset, you would probably need to create some sort of client server and or tunnels to specific systems within Telia. Now you can reduce that bottleneck and instead carry out the same thing, but on a much more secure, available and flexible way. So this is what Apigee brought, a new way of thinking regarding API management. This is a very smooth and easy managed process that simplifies for developers taking part in backend services and data at a fast, flexible and least of all secure way. From a business approach, there are some questions you would like to answer with your API strategy. How is your API traffic trending over time? Who are your top developers? Are you attracting more developers? With support features, life gets a lot more easy. Uh, and with Apigee, uh, it comes advantages like uh, design functions, security functions, easier to scale, monitor, and based on that, you can analyze and monetize. So, what you see here is the holistic overview of our platform and way of thinking, a skeleton over API Garden itself. We have an API proxy, which is the API manager that I just described, uh, Apigee. We have a firewall that is protecting the API backend services. Uh, and there are two ways to enter this API manager, either directly through our URL or through our developer portal, which you can find below of the API proxy. So, this is one of the typical use cases at API Garden. Uh, you see here in this flow, uh, to the left, there is a user uh, that signs up to the portal. Um, new user is created to uh, Apigee, which is our API manager, and a secret is provided to that user in return. Then this developer um, creates a new application and API key are requested. And this request email is forwarded to service responsible about the need to access that API. If you're lucky, that request is accepted. API key is provided to the developer and the developer can now access the API. Uh, then the application makes an API call. Apigee Edge authenticates and authorizes the user, handles the needed transformations and forwards the call to level one proxy routes the call to the correct backend system, and then the response is given, response is forwarded to Apigee, Apigee transforms and catches the response, and the response is returned to the application. And it will now follow a short demo when demonstrating this example through Postman, which is an API collaboration tool. So, what you see here is the Postman GUI, um, I need to authorize before um, being allowed to make my call uh, towards this API, which is the Global Address Management API. So I start by going into the um, API Manager, which is Apigee, where I need the key and the secret to this API. I start with copying the key here, which is the username. And what is very important to remember is that this type of authorization is basic OAuth. Uh, I go into here, I also get the secret, and then I post it in the password. It's also important to make sure that the URL is correct, target URL. Then I send my response. And this went fine, as you can see, 200 OK. Uh, here is my access token. This is what I'm um, capable of receiving when I have the key and the secret. But to make the actual call towards the API, I need an access token. And now I want to uh, get data. So I get, go to get address Sweden in this case. Um, I have my bearer token. 
So this I will copy here. Once copied, URL target is in order. I send my request. And now I have generated the data I need from the address management API, which is uh, Stogatan in uh, Solna. So that was the short demo, and uh, that was also our API manager tool. Um, apart from an API manager tool, we need a marketplace, a gathering point where we can communicate between publishers of APIs, users of APIs, and teams. Partners and developers need to be able to share experiences, services, documentation, and not to mention APIs with the community. Based on that concept, and as a natural component of our ecosystem, we have the developer portal. The developer portal is the self-service API marketplace, which has an essential role in our way of working with APIs at Telia. It is the hub where you as a developer or partner are working with Telia. And for us as owners and developers of the platform, it comes with obligations and requirements to maximize that partnership. One of the fundamentals of succeeding with API management is to be aware of the developer experience. It doesn't matter who we are as a business. Your company's APIs are useless if there's nobody there to use them. Tutorials, how-to articles, and a common pedagogical flow is a must-have. What also needs to be in the portal is some relevant documentation. The portal is based on a catalog mindset. RESTful APIs are documented in so-called Swagger specifications. The Swagger specification defines a set of files required to describe an API. For example, what backend does the call go towards, what operation it supports, and also what API parameters there are and what they return. If there is need for authorization, and also things like who owns the service, of course, and how you can reach them. But there are also other key factors in what makes a developer portal successful, and it's not only about the API documentation. The best portals should provide a self-service experience, which is the general concept we have here at API Garden. Of course, with the support and uh, proper onboarding from the core team, which is something that we take very seriously, of course. By providing permission-based self-service sub-portal, so to say portals within the portal, developer partners and other relevant stakeholders can own their own environment where they can edit, share, advertise their own APIs for customers, as well as others at a flexible, secure, and scalable way. This will both lead to increased deliveries of high-quality applications and increased speed to market. What is important to remember, though, is that third-party APIs can hurt your business just as much as failures in your own APIs. So it's really important that there is a secured way of getting access both as producer as well as consumer. It is also really useful if there are tools that can help users monitor API traffic, and this can be carried out in a developer portal as well. This is a really effective way of keeping track of API usage, which translates monetization, which is a way of participating in revenue sharing with the API providers which is basically one of the core reasons a company wants to have an API management strategy, to take part of the digital economy. The portal also has a very important feedback mechanism. As part of being the middle hand here at Telia, working with APIs, there are sometimes challenges in knowing what the users want. So a very important feature is to gather their feedback through blogs, customer support blogs, forums for discussions, community contributing content, for instance. Um, here are some of the business-to-business -business APIs that we provide. Uh, we have the Active Directory Integration Service, which is uh, there to manage uh, B2B clients, employees, for um, authorization and authentication uh, when ordering uh, new services. Uh, mobile subscriptions, uh, it is a service to order and manage mobile subscriptions. Device leasing, uh, that service is there to um, help uh, to de lease devices such as uh, mobiles, infopads, computers, etc. And we have the address management API. So, some key takeaways. Um, we come across them before, 
But the main reason for participating in the digital economy and to have an API strategy is of course in front of all the value. It drives revenue by automating and smoothening services, um, which in its case also will reduce time to market. Um, it will reduce delivery times by reusing ready-made services that are already there. You don't have to start from scratch. It will uh, also reduce cost by structuring service governance. Um, this whole standardization we mentioned. Uh, security, of course, one of the most important key takeaways. Access control is managed by API Garden for secure services that is being easy to use. And of course, the scalability. Telia's API's architecture is designed with future scalability and extendability in mind. How and where to start? Um, as Michael described as well, uh, it's really important to embrace the change and select the best platform for you. That can, for example, start with choosing the right API manager. Uh, in our case, this API manager is uh, Apigee, but it can depend on your situation, what manager that suits you. Develop for reusability. Uh, once again, then we don't have to start from scratch. We can reuse services that are already there. And this will save and uh, reduce uh, development costs. Uh, build up an initiative, um, intuitive, uh, build up an intuitive developer portal is uh, key for ease of use. You need this marketplace and gathering point where you can share experiences. Um, and of course, engaging with business stakeholders drives visionary product development. Um, and uh, that might be the core reason of uh, participating in the API economy. Having that said, we thank you for uh, participating and uh, we are now ready to answer questions. <laughs>